Six years ago, this August, Michael Brown, a black 18-year-old who had just graduated from high school, was shot and killed by a police officer in Ferguson. He's dead along with those of so many others set up a national debate about how to reduce police violence. But the deaths of George Floyd in Minneapolis this week and of Breonna Taylor in March are a painful reminder of just how little has changed. Why has there been so little progress and what needs to happen for these numbers to go down? Joining us live is Olu Osha, a lawyer, and also joining us is Lillian Senior, an engineering technician, all the way in the United States. Thank you, Lillian, and thank you, Osha, for joining us on the news. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Hi, Lillian, how are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well, thank you. Now, I'll start with you, Lillian. What was your initial reaction when you first encountered this recorded incident? It's, it's outrageous, you know. We're, we're angry. And we're just tired of police brutality and systemic racism and racism in general. Now, Olu Osha, many are viewing it as, an ev as evidence of institutionalized brutality towards black people. What aspect of the incident leads you to draw certain conclusions? Well, um, indeed, uh, I do view it um, as um, an aspect of um, structural and institutionalized uh, brutality, which is actually just a symptom of um, uh, the structural racism against um, blacks in general. And there's a history to it. Um, in the sheer brutality that was used by the police, um, they were going to incarcerate him on a very petty charge. You know, that's a pattern, there's a history to that. Uh, you know, they were they, the alleged uh, crime that brought the cops to the scene was that um, he had tried to pass off a counterfeit twenty dollar bill uh, to at a deli. Um, he seemed unaware of this, and um, as we said, there's a history to it, and they were going to incarcerate him. Now, blacks um, are only about twelve point seven percent of the United States population, but they disproportionately uh, represent uh, the the, the majority uh, of the prison population. There are about 2.3 million people incarcerated in the U.S. right now, and blacks are almost half of them. Uh, in the state of Maryland, for instance, 72.4% uh, of the uh, prison population uh, happen to be black men, and they only constitute less than 12% of the prison population. Um, there's a history to the incarceration of blacks and policing. In fact, the origin of policing in the U.S., uh, starts with what's called the paddy rollers uh, during the era of slavery. And, uh, you know, police patrols were used to catch runaway slaves. And one of the things they used was brutal force. And all of these were institutionalized. Uh, you know, slavery, of course, uh, was actually in the U.S. Constitution, in the uh, U.S. Constitution of 1787. And it uh, made black men three-fifths of a man. It's called the three-fifth clause. It just, just seems to be three-fifths of a white man. And so you can see uh, the dehumanization, you know, how Mr. Uh, George Floyd was dehumanized. He wasn't given any humanity when he cried out for water. Uh, they didn't respond. They didn't show the empathy you show a human being. A dog would be treated better than the way uh, George Floyd was treated. And, um, you know, the, 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 so with the Paddy rulers, after uh, slavery was uh, abolished uh, with the 13th Amendment, after the, uh, the, the end of the Civil War, we found that there's something that was also instituted in the South to sort of re-enslave uh, Blacks again through the prison system. It's called convict uh, leasing. And they used petty crimes, the Black codes and vagrancy laws, uh, through which they jailed Black men uh, using petty crimes. And they re-enslaved them and leased them out to uh, companies uh, for, uh, through, uh, as free labor. And um, just hold on there. Let me come to Lillian a bit. Now, Lillian, George Floyd, one too many of such incidences. And once something like this happened, we see street protests, campaigns. And this, this is one case too many. And previous other cases we can, we can point our fingers to to police brutality of killing of black African-Americans and black blacks in, in America. Um, so one of such is the hashtag that, that gained notoriety, Blacks Lives Matter. How effective do you think, or would you say, these campaigns of this nature are? Well, before I answer that question, I just wanted to piggyback a little bit on um, what Mr. Osha 
talked about okay. as far as his arrest. So all too frequently, uh, the police are called on black people in particular for false uh, false allegations. And so we don't even know at this point if the allegation made against George Floyd was even legitimate. You know, we, we don't, they haven't produced this fake $20 bill that they claim that he tried to use. I mean, just this, just this week also, we had a white woman uh, calling on, on camera threatening, uh, what was his name? Christian Cooper to call the police on him because she, he was telling her to put a leash on her dog, which he was perfectly in his right to do so. So similar, the, the case with George Floyd could be similar to that. We don't even, no one has talked about that as much. And I mean, at this point it's too late. So um, as far as the hashtags are concerned, um, the black lives matter. I mean, I think anything that brings light to the situation is helpful. The issue of George Floyd has, has caught so much international attention. So in the light of this, what, what do you think can be done more, especially in the light of George Floyd's? Well, I think, I think the, and these are just my opinions, but I think the first thing that, that should be done is look at the, the justice system. Look at the, the force that police, uh, police communities with. You know, specifically the black communities and just just in the, the rioting that's going on right now, the protesting, there's a lot of peaceful protesting going on and the police are aiming at peaceful protesters with rubber bullets, with tear gas, with things that are just completely unnecessary, unwarranted. Um, and why? Why is it? Why? Why in certain states is this allowed to continue when you have other states where the police are peacefully joining protesters? You have in Miami and Tennessee and different places, uh, certain police officers are taking knees in solidarity with the protesters. But in places like New York and Atlanta and Minneapolis, the police are, are being more violent than the protesters and even the provocateurs that, that are being hired to send in and incite riots. So first of all, that just needs to be addressed in, in just in the moment. And there needs to be accountability held to the police officers that terrorize neighborhoods and communities on a daily basis. There needs to be uh, fellow officers that are not racist, that are not violent. They need to be standing up for the communities and saying, hey, that's not right, because we don't see that at all. We don't see other police officers who are in disagreement with this. All we see are police officers being violent. When you, and when instances like George Floyd comes up, the, you know, the police officers are quick to say, well, not all police officers are bad, but we don't see them taking a stand against it. So okay. that is something that needs to happen across the board. Okay, Osha, let me come to you finally, Osha. Uh, what comparisons can you make between the challenges of policing in America and those experienced in Nigeria where the race issue is not a factor? Quickly, if you will, Osha. Okay, well, um, well, first of all, the thing is, America is a land of rule of law. By the time I, when I lived in Nigeria, um, I've only lived under dictatorships. Um, I, I left in Nigeria over 20 years ago and uh, we didn't have rule of law. In America, you have rights, you have rights, all his rights were violated, his Fifth Amendment rights of due, due process, uh, a right to a trial. Um, he was executed right there uh, of, um, you know, innocent until proven guilty, a uh, fair trial. Um, in fact, he's also, the use of force was a violation of his, um, uh, of, of his, of his, eight, uh, of his Eighth uh, Amendment rights, uh, which, does, which prohibits cruel and unusual punishment uh, and treatment. So, um, you know, in Nigeria, you know, you, from what I recall, there were just basically no rights. It's not a land where rule of law is established or the equality of everybody or human dignity. America is predicated on the rule of law. All men are created equal. It is unfortunate that um, blacks are still suffering the legacy of, of slavery. Blacks were brought here for one purpose only, to make them as property of white people. 
and they were structured. Osha, we have to let you go now. Thank you very much for joining us on the news and for your contribution. And also with you, Lillian Senior, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.